In the following videos, we are going to make our RESTful Web Service API support password reset functionality. When user forgets their password, they will use the page in your mobile app or in your web app to enter their email address and then submit the form with the request to reset their password. And at this moment, there is no password reset taking place yet. It's just a simple request from a user to help them change their password because they cannot remember it. Our RESTful Web Service API will receive this request. And before it can do anything about user's password, it needs to check first if such user exists in our database. So in the step three on my diagram, we will query our database table to check if the user with provided email address exists in our database table, which is called users. If user with provided email address is found in our database table, we will then generate a unique password reset token to identify this user and this request and we will set a one day expiry date on this token. You will learn how to set expiry dates on your token and if a different value than one day works better for your project, then you can easily set a different expiry date. We will then store this token in a separate database table for our later reference. So once we have generated and stored the password reset token in our database, we will then use Amazon simple email service to email user a message letting them know that someone has requested to reset their password with our project. And only if it was them who requested password reset, they will be then invited to click on a link and email message to continue with the password reset process and reset their current password to a new one. User then reads their email message and if it were them who requested password reset, they will click on the link to confirm their intention and to proceed to the next step. And the click on that link and email message will open a new web page. It will pass on to that web page via a URL query string, a request parameter, which is a unique password reset token. This token is very important and it cannot be empty and it cannot be altered. So the web page that opens to the user in step eight in our diagram will contain two fields, one input field to import their new password and the second input field to retype their new password so that we can compare the two passwords and make sure there is no typo. Once user is done typing their password, they will then click on submit button, which will send a password reset token and a new password to our RESTful web service endpoint. And we can then validate the password reset token. And if it is valid, we will update user's password in our database. Upon receiving a request to reset user's password on step 10 in our diagram, our web service will then first check if the password reset token has been indeed generated by our API and that it has not expired and that it is still valid. We will then also check if this password reset token is still found in our database and it has not been already used. And if all is good with the password reset token, we will then use Spring Security Library to securely encode user's new password and update their record in our database table with the new password. And once the new password is stored in our database, we will then delete the password reset token from our records so that it cannot be used again. Once the password has been updated and the password reset token deleted from our database, we will respond back to a web page that sent the request with a confirmation message that the password has been reset, or we'll respond with an error message that for some reason, we could not update user's password. So after learning that their password has been successfully updated, user can then attempt uh, to log into their application with their new password and it should work. So in the following videos, we are going to use Spring Framework to step-by-step -step code all of the steps mentioned in this diagram and make our RESTful Web Service API support the password reset functionality. So let's do it.